uh, KFC, uh, you, you know, you join us for a lot of these shows, but today, uh, you know, you joining us would uh, is, uh, seems to be very pertinent to what's going on among the among the community. So, uh, you want to talk about the recent uh, dev blog and the uh, uh, reactions to that as well? Yeah. Uh, so, I'd love to talk about that. The um, about well, yesterday we released a dev blog seventy five, which was. I wrote two of the articles for one of them was about testing and the other one was about modern. Um, and a lot of people, a lot of people got very, very upset about it. Um, mm. And so we, uh, we eventually had to do a, I, I had to do a follow up post, which was earlier today um, that I'm hoping will, will help smooth some of that over. Yeah. So actually, and you know what? I also had, uh, I don't know if you wanted to talk about that first or, cause I had some questions as well. If you wanted me to, to ask them or uh, how you wanted to do this. Yeah, absolutely. So here's the thing, though. Um, in this addendum, I, I asked uh, players to give me a bit of time while I come across, or while I come up with some actual um, solutions. But the basically what I'm asking for is just a little bit of time for me to to amend the the policies, since these policies have been in place for quite some time, at least some of them. Um, and we'd like to and we'd like to change them. Uh, we can tell clearly from the from the. Uh, violent reaction uh, from the last post uh, that the internet just... violence, not <laughs> straight violence. Internet violence is using all caps. So <laughs> feels like yeah. So though. yeah, go ahead. We're looking. We're just looking for a little. Um, and then once we have, once once we had that time, we have the we have the the solution. We'd like we'd like to actually put it into place and then mm -hmm. um, go from there. Mark, real quick, Mark. Thank you for joining us. Yeah. No. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, always, always. Um, well, we were about to go into uh, KFC's kind of uh, addendums or additions to the dev blog, particularly about moderation. I don't know if maybe you had something to talk about that as well. Um, I'll let KFC go first. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> all right, yeah, floor's all yours, KFC. Oh, I see. Yeah, so I wanted to apologize to everybody for it. I feel like... One of the one of the biggest lessons that I took away from this first one from uh, that blog seventy five was I think to be a little less vague. Um, I think a lot of people took uh, a lot of took people took it for uh, a lot of different, and I think in the end there was a couple of points that were hard to read or really hard to um, to get to the bottom of, and without without a clear response to it, I think it was impossible for us to really uh, get through to the to the to the core issues but i think ultimately it, it helped us it helped um it helped us to narrow down the grievances the grievances it, it helped us to narrow it well you know what it helped put into clarity exactly what the perspective of was the, of the players that they had against the moderator moderation team or the moderation policy. um and i think that it helped me a lot to be able to see exactly what what about the dev blog was so um was controversial so yeah hot button all right yeah go go for it <laughs> and i really hope that after people will get a chance to read the addendum to to clear up some of those those misconceptions um that obviously there will still be some some frayed feelings um and some calls for for change and um to those people i'm hoping that uh, we'll be able to reconvene about this um once we have a chance to change yeah so do we want to go into questions now real quick yeah sure if you wanted to read your agenda all right well you know we'll just go yeah. into questions since i i think a lot of them will touch on i think what you had written and uh, mark again please uh Actually, this this one goes out to this first one goes out to both of you and Mark. Feel free to jump in at any of them. How aware of the how aware are the other developers on the moderating aspect of the game? How much input do the other developers put into the moderator policies, or is it just KFC? Yeah, I don't know if you want to speak on that first. <laughs> Uh, the other developers are aware of the um, the policies. They all, they've. I I am ultimately the one that puts it together. Um, I the one that uh, that that steers the ship in regards to the moderator team. Um, the other developers have been aware of those policies, uh, and they don't uh, they don't disagree with them. 
Um, but when they do, they bring it up to me. Mm -hmm. All right. And, uh, you know, I, I also have... So, uh, I guess in short, they're, they're fully aware. Yeah, the they're, I, yeah. I, would, I figure and, as much. And, Go ahead. And to be clear, like, um, this isn't just for, like, moderation, um, but almost, like, almost every single... Um, every single topic, every single feature that goes into the game, um, every single policy that we set, for the most part, uh, most people are on the same page, but there's always people on the team that might have like a different view. And it's no different whether it's on moderation, whether it's on a feature that we're putting into the game. And I think it's important that um, it would be weird if people didn't, didn't have like their own views. <laughs> It'll be really strange. It'll be really strange to me. Um, because I don't think there's any group of people, any group of fourteen you can take in the world, and and they're gonna have um they're gonna have like their own views, right? So I I wouldn't say that like you know everybody um thinks the same way in terms of the moderation policies, but at the end of the day, we all work as a team, and we'll all come together and be happy with um where things land. Uh, even if, like, at some point in the process, someone did have, like, a different view, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so, yeah, this list of questions is kind of a compilation of, uh, you know, grievances and reactions uh, from, from all over the community. And I've kind of filtered them to be a little less emotionally charged, so we'll see if, uh, see if I represented well. But, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reference it back to, to what was written in the original post. So, let's get to it. Quote, the average Foxhole player only plays the game for about 20 hours. If you're one of the, those players with hundreds or thousands of hours, you aren't just in the extreme minority, you're an outlier. This article is dedicated to that core fan base for whom moderation exists. Now, many of the players who have put in those hundreds or thousands of hours, uh, they've taken a lot of, they've taken this as, you know, kind of dismissive since because they have, you know, they have a majority of the hours they thought of themselves as the core fan base, as opposed to the players who spend maybe 20 hours and then stop playing. Uh, can, can you address this kind of general reaction? Yeah, I think, that, again, this was something that I th I'm not sure how it got so horribly misconstrued. I think it was just possibly too, like, worded a little bit too... Uh, uh, fan but... The, the, the core message that I'd meant for that to read was that moderation exists primarily for the veterans. That is to say that most players only play the game for about 20 hours, and these players, the ones that play for less than 20 hours, they they've don't even, aren't even aware uh, that moderation exists. I mean, if you think about your first 20 hours of Foxhole, if, if you can even remember that far back, like, try to remember exactly how many issues that you had with other players and... and when you had those issues, what did you do about it? I think very usually it's a it's a common reaction to try to deal with it yourself before seeking out the extra the extra support. And so, when I was mentioning that, what I meant is that the veterans are the ones that have the really complex issues, the ones that that can't really be resolved simply by um, muting them, for example. And it's for those people that moderation exists at all. And that was that was really all I meant by that. It, and I think some people took that to mean that we don't care about you as the minority. Um, but exact what I meant to say was exactly the opposite of that. That the minority is actually the the ones we care the most about, the veterans, the ones with the hundreds or thousands of hours. Yeah, just statistically, those who put in the thousands of hours are statistically an outlier compared to the I don't know thousands of others who maybe put in those twenty hours. Except if, when you open with that, it may come off as very <laughs> dismissive, yeah. apparently. Yeah, well, that is how it is. Um, you know, let's, let's keep going along here. Uh, quote, our interference, by, you know, moderator interference, erodes self-regulation. That any action you take to prevent griefers is wasted effort because the moderators will just snap their fingers. Players need to expect that nothing will be done. We need you, the players, to find the exploits, take precautions against the griefers, Get angry and talk about the problems. Fix them when you can. Report them when you can't. Unquote. Now, I think that everyone read the get angry part and took that part. But, uh, how... <laughs> so, so, looking back on it. Looking back on it. 100%. Um, how literal did you mean expect that nothing will be done? 
So for me, when I was playing, when I, again, when I was um, playing Foxhole in the early days, right? For me, it was always a matter. I, I have to rely on myself first, right? To try my best to um, to take action, um, to make, uh, to to try to, for example, like cover cover my own ass, right? Uh, I think that's that's expected. It's like if you leave your the the cars or the keys to your car or your car unlocked, that you know that you're not doing everything that you can to prevent the car from being stolen. Now, that's not to say that it's it's your fault if the car does get stolen. Um, but we have to ask people to try their best to do to take every precaution necessary. That the moderators should be and and really should be the last resort. Um, the moderators have to deal with a lot of a lot of different issues, and many of them are very very nuanced. Um, and I think that it's important that to to recognize that if if something has happened to you, that obviously you can report it to us, but also that you should be trying your best to to give a, give us a hand. Um, by first, like for example, if if there's an issue with a griefer, we need a name, right? We need to know the name of somebody to investigate. We can't just get a, a mod mail that says, "Hey, somebody's griefing. Can you can you just come in and check uh, lock more, and we'll come and take a look?" Which happens frequently. Um, moderators will come in and take a look at lock more, but without a name, it's difficult to really to really isolate it. And so that's all we meant was that we 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 want to help you, but we need we need more. We need you to help us too. And there's not always a guarantee, I would think there's not always a guarantee that, you know, all your problems will be solved through the mod mail. Yeah. So then when, when you say fix them, fi fix the griefing when you, where you can, and as well as self-regulation, that one stuck out with a lot of people. What did you have in mind exactly? Does, does, does you know, when settling a dispute or maybe someone believes that they've been griefed by this specific person, does that, does that include posting player names to uh, Reddit slash Discord with, you know, pictures of relevant evidence for everyone to see and, uh, you know, just kind of point, point everyone's <laughs> no. fingers at, at that person. Hey, keep your eye on this guy. He might be, I think he's griefing. Well, I believe he's griefing. Is that what you meant by self-regulation? Heck no. Um, I think the, the, the fine example, the really, really good example was the stockpile logs that we released several months ago. Um, it might surprise a lot of people to, to learn that the um, moderation in this game or the, the number of griefing reports that came before that versus the griefing reports that came after that dropped very steeply. That before, before we released the stockpile logs, we were getting reports maybe three or four times a day that the, somebody's stealing all the ammunition for the FOB. I, and I'm not kidding. It was, you know, everybody's, the ammunition's all gone. Can, can you please look into this? There's obviously a thief. And without the understanding that actually if there's 40 people withdrawing ammunition from a fob, that, that the ammunition just disappears. And so with the stockpile logs that we implemented, it didn't, it didn't actually make griefers go away. It, I mean, griefers are still around. They find other ways around these systems, no doubt. But the self-regulation is that now, without even thinking about it, a lot of players will come in and they'll see it for themselves. They'll, they'll, if they suspect there's a cheater or they suspect there's somebody griefing them, naturally the first thing they're going to do is check those logs and see, hey, you know, I don't like. I see somebody here who's withdrawn a bunch of supplies. Um, I think this person definitely looks like he might be a griefer. And with that, like like I said before, you have a name and you can give us a name and we can take a look on our end to take a look if if anything is is going on. But giving you the power, basically giving the players the power to uh, to investigate these issues themselves, I think it has been the most powerful tool uh, from the moderator's perspective ever. Um, giving, giving, reassuring the players that you know that there's an issue um, or if, that there isn't an issue. You know, someone just asked in the chat, "Can we shoot griefers on sight?" Now, actually, you know, I'll even preface that by asking. Uh, actually, I can't read the name of who, who put that in. On my text, but um, who so, you know, uh, you know, can we shoot griefers on site? I would ask the first thing I would ask is, are you sure they're griefing? That's the first thing I'll ask. Like, maybe you think they're griefing, but I mean, like, do you know? And that's a really good point, honestly. I think that griefer it's really easy for us to use a blanket term like griefer, and and all of us have that person in our mind that's summoned. You know, ban the griefers, you know, make it, you know, attack, like, let's get rid of all of the griefers. But the reality is that it's very, very, very rare that there's a, um, that there's one, that, that there's just somebody who's out there to kill you. 
um, it's very it's very usual that um, there's always more than one side to the story, and it's very difficult for me to sort of um, to to explain that uh, without actually showing you an example, which was that whole uh, the truck thief conundrum. Um, that's actual uh, that's a real problem that happens all the time. It actually, happens it ha that was the the root problem that we used to use as sort of like a, a gauge for like how moderation is supposed to look why um and then until we yeah, we until we added the um uh the vehicle locks um now now you can't actually steal like this problem actually doesn't exist anymore which is why i used it uh because i didn't want to give real life examples of ways you can grief the team uh that actually worked right uh, but this example doesn't work anymore because if you were trying to steal this person's car you'd find that you actually can't unlock it because if they've been in that vehicle recently, then the, the wrench doesn't work. Um, and that's that's one of those core problems that we just sort of have to look at. So if you're asking, should I shoot this griefer or not? I mean, my answer is no, you should never kill somebody without good reason. But uh, do, I mean, that's kill. important. Yeah. yeah. You yeah, should never team they're... kill. Yeah, well, yeah, killing is a, is a part of the game. Yeah, if they're, if they're on the opposing side, you know, just go for it. War crimes, you know, that's that's not my purview. Oh wait, I'm a journalist. But anyway, um, if they're on uh, the opposing side, then we we, we kind of need you to do that. <laughs> so we I don't appreciate hesitate. it. But if they're on your team, no, don't. No. Yeah. Um, all right. So you know, what, let's let's get into the to the one that really stuck a chord with everyone, and that was the uh, couple of paragraphs about the specific examples you gave. And I understand you had to be vague so as not to disclose names because we don't want witch hunts. Uh, but uh, you know, this was about a situation involving an alt account, someone who was using an alt account. Uh, so quote: He was a veteran of the game for over a year and a dear friend and dedicated fan of the game. And if this group of players, or I should say those who were calling for a permanent ban, had known the true identity of this player and heard his rationale for the behavior, they would have advocated leniency. And then I, But I would like to accentuate this, and you wrote immediately after, this player was banned, but not permanently. So I think, what, I, think I want to accentuate how you know, punishment was given, but it wasn't a permanent ban. Now, even then, a lot of people uh, you know, were concerned uh, you know, pointing to, uh, you know, uh, the lack of a permanent ban or something, you know, the, the fact that they were guilty in this sense, but you still didn't issue a permanent ban. You know, this is a form of, of, of favoritism, at least that's what they were saying. And that regardless of who it was, uh, you know, these people, they, they would have advocated, they would not have advocated leniency. Uh, many believe that because your policies are so lenient on griefers, at least in comparison to other MMOs, they are effectively protecting griefers. These policies are protecting griefers and encouraging future griefing. Do you agree with that assessment? I see that perspective. I definitely don't agree with I don't disagree with it. Um, it's hard to agree with it, but let's be clear here. The main point of this whole addendum was that basically I need to recognize when I've made a mistake. And I think that let's... I, I I feel like I feel strongly that there is a mistake here because otherwise so many people wouldn't be upset and so we need to take a really close look at these these uh, policies and then change what what they are so that we have a a more uh, a more in line moderation policy that fits with the veteran community of which it's supposed to service. Now the addendum itself addresses this concern because I think again I th there was some misreading of this line, and that people seem to think that we were taking we were we were being lenient for our friends, which is not what we meant. All that we meant here was that we always try to look at each person like a real person. It's not just a number; they're not just a griefer. That they're a real person with feelings behind that keyboard, and that some players, even if they did do something very wrong, they still feel they're still people um they're friends of ours not not me specifically not the mod team specifically but maybe friends of yours and that these people just like those friends you you would listen to them you would hear them out hear their side of the story just like in any justice system you want the innocent or the, the the guilty party to at least be able to defend their case and in this case we talked to them 
personally. We actually spoke to them directly to find out what was going on because their behavior from this was so out of line from what they normally did that we were actually concerned that maybe somebody had stolen their account. Like this is how far out of line their character, this their actions were. And when we talked to them, obviously that wasn't the case. So we had to ban them. And honestly, it hasn't been a problem from this person. This this issue hasn't resurfaced. Yeah. So, so that, but coming around back to 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 uh, uh, worries about you know trust and the air, the feeling of safety from griefers and the, you know the potential that you know if you don't bring the hammer down on the person, they might you know you you are effectively inviting future griefing because they know well yeah maybe I'll get a stern talking from KFC and I'll get banned for a few weeks, maybe a month, but. Eh, just you know, just wait a few months, and then I'll be able to affect that war, and I can grief then. Yeah, and, and it's assuming the worst of intentions, but uh, there is that concern there. Dude. What do you have to say to that? I think it's a legitimate concern, and um, I think let's review the policy. Um, not just review it; let's change it. Um, if people feel strongly that this, that that, for example, issuing permanent bans is going to be a way to subvert these these players from acting this way, then maybe we should give that a try. I, it's, I've strongly advocated against it um, from my own personal experience, but I feel like, honestly, if, if everybody feels like they really want to see it as a, uh, as a possible deterrent, then maybe let's give it a shot and see what happens. Always in flux here. Um, so then, uh, you know, actually, this one stuck out to me, this quick line here. Quote, that being said, and you actually close the, uh, the section with this, that being said, we have issued permanent bans before, unquote. Without implicating anyone in particular, of course, what what were the actions that were taken by this person that warranted the rare actual permanent ban? What did they do? If if you can uh, even I can't say, sure. Basic in in very very simple terms, hack. hacking. So just straight yeah. up hacking. It was uh, it was a hacker going uh, full matrix. Not and... appreciate what he was. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. full on neo. Okay, but and how often do you see that though? Um, we've seen cheaters before. Uh, we've had to ban people for cheating in the past, uh, but we've taken precautions against it. Um, I, there's actually a couple of threads out there suggesting that it's fairly easy to hack Voxel, but I think Mark will be able to elaborate a little bit more on that, but it's not as easy as people. Yeah. Um, and you know, real quick, I also want to close this out because I, I know Mark wanted to get the logistics. and I don't know how much time he had. But uh, about the moderator team itself, it is an all-volunteer moderator team. Um, uh, you know, what, what powers do they have, and what are their kind of rules of engagement when handling reports and arguments? Uh, again, let's, we're going to go right back to the drawing board with it. Up until this point, over the last year or so, uh, it's largely been me holding them back. And just saying, you know, we need to, like, watching, or, like, basically created a list of policies that hopefully will, um, I hope, would create a fair environment and a positive one uh, for people to play the game. But, obviously, uh, we need to change that. So, maybe we just need less holds barred on these moderators, and we just need to start taking more action. Mm -hmm. So, we'll stay tuned for that. Um, give me, like I said in the addendum, uh, give me two weeks Give me a chance to actually talk to the moderator team about the the tool or about the uh, the policies they'd like to see, um, so that they can action the uh, the problems that they want to action, and we'll see where that takes us. In two weeks, we'll return to you guys because I don't like leaving things uh, with innocuous random points. Um, like I don't want to leave you guys with hollow promises. So we set a firm deadline for it, and we will come back and we will try our best to explain what changes we made in the best way we possibly can. Uh, without uh, without compromising the overall system, so yeah. you'll just have to wait for that. Yeah, I, I don't want to belabor this whole moderation thing too much, but I, I got to ask these questions to give some context. Currently, how many game moder moderators are there total on the roster? Uh, like twenty. Twenty, only twenty. Yeah. How how many would you say on average are online at any given time? I'd say. Like actually actioning mod mails is hard to say because they sure. do it sort of in their spare time. Um, and there's also online, you know, hours. Yeah, uh, online like 
like actually at their computer looking at Discord stuff. Yeah, maybe able not to actually, actually do something. Probably about three or four okay. at any given time in the in the Southeast Asian time zone. It's probably less. Yeah, and I can that can fluctuate to maybe one. Um, I, I, you know, I, I, this this one's actually been suggested a few times. Could there be ways to expand the moderator team beyond community volunteers? Uh, say, uh, could there be could you, could you, could it be possible for Clapfoot to hire more developers whose job it is to be community oriented, you know, kind of like like like, K, like you are KFC, like more hiring more KFCs in effect? Is that even a possibility? Is that something? Is that not the direction you want to go in? Yeah, that, I mean it's always a possibility in the future. Um, we've always because Foxhole kind of. Um, started out as such like a community-based game like it wasn't even it was just a free game at the beginning it wasn't even um uh it's very unusual i don't think a lot of games start out just completely free um without any sort of like a commercial uh um commercial like bent to it usually games that are free they start off with some sort of like oh you can purchase like founders some sort of like founder pack thing or some weird thing but fox mm -hmm. literally started as like you can go online and download like an EXE, right? Um, and it sort of started with the community and um, it's, we, we got mods for like the Discord. And I, if, if I remember back, um, naturally they just grew into mods for the game. And um, when we sort of wanted to, when the game went into, um, when the game did become a commercial game, um, that's when we uh, reached out to uh, uh, KFC um, to sort of help to lead some of the moderation. And we've talked about it several times about possibly um, expanding that role. Uh, but, you know, a lot of times we actually feel like um, we like the feeling that players from the community are helping other players from the community. And if we just hired some sort of like a faceless, um, not, faceless might not be the right word, but just hire, you know, someone who didn't know about like Foxhole. It's something that, you know, we question whether that is better or worse, right? Like you want someone mm -hmm. who doesn't care about the game. Like even if you don't agree with some of the policies that we've had in the past and, and that is completely fair. I gotta say, I don't know what's worse. Like, um, <laughs> those those policies or people who don't even know about the game, right? Someone who comes in just kind of works like a nine to five job, doesn't doesn't care about people, pro doesn't care about people from the community, doesn't care about the actual game itself. Does you know they just kind of shut off like after work? It's a job. Um, I, I kind of find it hard to believe that someone like that is going to do a better job, right? Um, so, but, it, it, you know, as I, like, at the same time, you know, we're always looking um, to see what's best. So if, 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 if that's something that has to happen at some point in the future, maybe we'll do it. I don't know, maybe it's like a 1.0 thing. Um, maybe if the game gets larger, but at the same time, you know, I'm not going to lie, it's a, it's a scale thing too, right? Like, our team is only 14 people, right? At the end of the day, and like um, the entire team has to scale very like appropriate with the size of the game, right? Like it, the same way, we're not gonna, in terms of resources, we're not gonna hire a, a hundred like programmers um, when the the game doesn't have like a budget of a AAA game. We can't hire a hundred a hundred like programmers in the same way. We can't necessarily hire. A whole bunch of like moderators um you know when the game is in like a triple a game with with like with like tens of thousands of players constantly right so it, there's there's like the reality of the business as well as another thing right right um but i would say right now the bigger factor though um it is definitely that we feel like um having moderation team having max who actually cares about the game um is is way better than just you know <laughs> having another moderation team that really doesn't care about the game really doesn't care about the players at all they don't, right? they don't, they don't even know people in the community they don't even know the full game 
and they'll just they'll be made they'll be the ones making decisions if you hire a third party, which I think is what we're we're getting at here. But yeah, yeah, yeah. If, exactly. if I may, if I may, yeah. maybe one side that should be considered. And I'm saying I'm, I, I completely agree with having a team of moderators that cares about the game. I completely agree with that, and I think that's the way to go. However. I do believe that one thing that struck a bad chord with, um, and this was addressed earlier, but one of the things that did strike a bad chord with um, the community was the idea that there is a certain personal bias when uh, uh, going case by case. Perhaps what people are looking for and I don't know if, if, if it's if it's as necessary as it seems, but perhaps what people are looking for and what this third party would bring is this sort sort of unbiased, non personal kind of approach to these cases. I think that's something that warrants at least some looking into. The idea of impartial, like these are the rules, you have to follow them. If you don't follow them, then you are breaking the rules. And there has to be some sort of punishment. I believe that that is kind of the stance that a lot of people in the community, especially those who have been taken to Reddit, um, to uh, complain. That that's the word. Um, See, I uh, believe uh, impartiality is required. You know, I used to think that way too, but then I, I think about Foxhole in particular and just how much of an open, unique sandbox and social simulator it is, and I don't know if. I don't know, because I've actually I, I talked about this with KFC I think last year. We had a we had a long talk about uh, yeah oh yeah just bring in third party just hire ten dudes who will who'll come in they'll just go through all the mob mail quick and they'll just you know yeah you griefed yeah you're gone perma ban uh, you know oh you stole a truck yeah you clearly stole the truck so you know perma ban and if it's like do you want someone rubber stamping that hardcore it's it's well, I agree that it's a delicate issue. I completely agree. And I prefer having it be people from the community to help shape the community. But at the same time, there are certain moments where... And, and, and for lack of a better way of putting it, because, come on, this is a game. Um, people feel like justice is not being served. That the rules don't apply to everyone. You know what I mean? I believe there's a certain level of that that people are feeling right now. Yeah, I think this is a good spot to sort of end it because I think ultimately mm -hmm. we still need, you're right, um, Rod, that we need time to really like review these things. Um, the policies, is, uh, but as well as this um, internally as to like what, we have to do some soul searching as to what exactly we want Foxhole 1.0 moderation to even look like. Um, and so we have to we have to do some soul searching and discussion for that as well. Uh, but that being said, Mark, um, actually, so I want to change tax a little bit. I need because I need the two weeks to to investigate the moderator policies anyway. Um, Mark actually asked me earlier today um, about logistics, um, and as was probably no mystery to a lot of you is that I haven't been playing the game recently. I haven't been playing for the last. I mean, I've been playing off and on, but not nearly as much as somebody like say Cronus Winter. Um, who's been playing like nonstop, 12 hours a day, doing nothing but logistics. And so when Mark came to me to ask, well, like, what are the community suggestions for logistics? Um, I basically told him, hey, why don't we just ask the community? Because <laughs> they'll know better than I will. Um, and so I actually asked Cronus Winter specifically um, if he could be here today. And he's in the in the call room. If um, I don't know if you, is that okay to leave it there? Or are we ready to, to move on to the other thing that, uh, or to the logistics part of this? Yeah, I, th I, I think that's a great place to leave it. Otherwise, if you can run around in a depressing circle for about uh, another hour or so. So you heard it here, folks. KFC and Markfoot hate the community, and they hate you in particular. So if you, uh, <laughs> you, uh, if you have any suggestions on ways to Im actually improve uh, you know, the moderation policies, please post it to Reddit because it will get lost in the Discord. Post it to Reddit, yep. post your thoughts. Um, I will say right now, uh, saying KFC should be fired will be dismissed because that's, I don't think that's an option. Um, and additionally, if you want to join the moderation team, uh, just talk to KFC if you'd like to be a moderator yourself. Yep. I think that's safe to say. All right, Mark, you spells, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to beat that. Hey, Lef, Lafar, Lede Lef how do you say your Lef name? 
Uh, it's a French name. It's Le Farfadet. Uh, Farfadet. French. Yeah, it's a French word for the leprechaun. Um, <laughs> but before we get this out of the way, as a representative from Montreal and Quebec, I have a very important question for Mark Foot, which is: Are you a Leaf fan? Um, <laughs> the hard, coming up with a hard question. It's a it's a sore topic. Um, I I was definitely. Uh, I need a yes so or no a... before we can progress on this. <laughs> yeah, but honestly, I don't know when the last time I've actually had any I'm kind sorry. of hope in them. I'm sorry, right. it won't work. Okay, drag me back. <laughs> uh, no, I'm I'm actually joking. Okay, the real question I have for you guys is: according to the um. Everything that's going on with the moderation system and it's going to touch a bit on the logic side of it. Um, there's, there seem, I, I think what the community is more mad about and KFC, you asked for two weeks to like a kind of a grace period to fix what you think the community wants to be fixed. Um, my, my big question to you guys is there's a lot of gray, uh, gray area in uh, the moderation, like for whether it's like when supply vehicles or whatever are going to be replaced versus time where they won't be replaced, um, whether or not the punishment is going to be issued with something or whether or not the punishment is not, uh, punishment is not going to be issued for another thing. Um, do you guys think that in a certain way, it wouldn't be better that sunlight is the best as in fact, and as in that make every decision like, not public record, but to be like, hey, we're taking this action for this reason, instead of just saying, trust us, we're doing our job. And I mean that by no disrespect, as in, you guys, well, KFC is an employee, but all the moderators are volunteers, and we really appreciate the work that they're putting in as volunteer in the game. I think that's a really, really good point, especially the part about the gray area. But that's something that I think, like, that's exactly the question that I need to mull over. I, I'm not even kidding. That's the, um, because the existing moderator policies existed to try to smooth that over, the, the gray areas, trying to figure out how do we deal with these, with these issues? And, like, is it right to put it in the public space or the public space and, and have those conversations? How much information is too much information? And, yes, uh, because you don't want to. You don't want to start a public lynching of somebody. Exactly. That, that's exactly what you're. And I, I understand that. Um, exactly. And I. I don't think. I. I think we still need to be very, very careful about that. Um, nothing's changed in that regard. But we still like. Like I said, that's why I need the two weeks. So I need to actually take a the hard look at it. Take a hard look, not just at the policies themselves, but at the philosophy of those policies, and then really come to a conclusion about what we're what we're going to. As of oh, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. There is one thing that I do want to speak to about that. Um, you know, besides like the gray area, like talking about that hard like judgment call um, that sometimes needs to be made. One thing that w we are wanting to like invest in is um, is like better ways to significantly reduce um, the amount of like, ambiguity, and that's where like sort of the stockpile logs that we were talking about uh, previously is a part of is a part of that like puzzle, right? So that there are cases where okay, it's very clear to like, everyone um, in the game that like something happened, and like if you think about before when we didn't have the stockpile logs, it was totally like you wouldn't even know. You would just have a guess that somebody walked off with like with a bunch of, like supplies. Now you know. Who it is, right? So one of our I'm, goals is, is to actually reduce the amount of like ambiguity on top of you know anything else that we might be planning. I I understand that, but I think I, I think you're not respectfully hearing what I'm what I'm saying right now. The problem is not like the stockpile logs are a great addition. Don't get me wrong; they're a really nice addition because there's a lot of time where, like KFC talked about earlier, is that oh, where's the ammo? Somebody must have stolen it. But it's just like, no, no, we use it all. Um, yeah. the, the, the thing I'm trying to say is really just when the, when the moderator teams render a decision, because I can go from something that happened to me recently, another player blew up my harvester while it was not at the front line, not an, an active front line, 
and just blew it up, asked the mod, hey, can you deal with this? Okay, it has been handled. So, okay, are you going to give me my harvester back? It's like, no, we can't do that. Whereas in KFC just said that the, the moderator teams can give something back, can, can give stuff back when it's it's in certain case. So my question to you is not, I, I don't want to do the process of my harvester disappearing, but I want to go into, like, why did a moderator told me that you guys can't replace stuff, and then two days later, KFC is like, yeah, we replace stuff sometimes, but not all the time. So it's really just to have a, a clear understanding of what the moderators and the moderation policy is. And that, that's why I'm asking us right now, regardless of the two weeks, that when the new policy framework comes out, it needs to be clear and like clear that there's... Like, you can't, in a game like Foxhole, you can't take away the the judgment call that some people need to make sometimes. Like, uh, was this something, was this really griefing, or was it something else? Like, you have people that do uh, suicide trucks, pull up a truck full of, uh, full of a bunch of people, drive it into an enemy front line to have the infantry there quickly and be able to destroy a bunch of defenses in mass. Is it griefing? If you take it to the letter of the word, it is griefing because you destroyed a friendly vehicle by driving it. But is it really griefing in a sense that it help, actually helped your team push? So it's a very complex situation, very complex issue. And I just think we need to... It, this needs to be clear when you came up with the moderation framework in two weeks. Yeah. Of what people can expect. And You've got it. I mean, you've got it 110%. This is the the challenge of moderation. Um, I want to add another example onto that because I had one recently. This is a real case that we got several weeks ago. I'm, I'm not, um, but basically a player drove a flatbed truck into an AT turret. That was me. Uh, oh, was it you? There you go. Yeah, that was me. <laughs> Yeah, okay. no, well, well, I mean, the container that, thing, that the see, container drops. Yes, that was me, yeah. Exactly. Okay, well, then I don't feel so bad about this. So, yeah, you drove a flatbed truck into an AT turret, to, and when the flatbed truck exploded, the crate fell off of it and blocked the AT turret's line of sight, which is genius. It's absolutely <laughs> genius. And I, I sat there thinking to myself, like, people had reported you, and they were like, this guy just threw away yeah, a flatbed truck. Can you bear this? Yeah, hours because of that. <laughs> And that's exactly that's so you get it. This is this is exactly the kind of problem that moderators have to deal with. Is how do we how do we draw a line through that? How do you write a rule? And that's that's one of the biggest challenges we have. Yes, no, that, the, and that, that that's exactly why. Like that's exactly what we thought about it. Is that um, it, it it's it needs to be lenient. But need that that's what when people already are asking for a third party moderating system, it's. It's a very complex situation because you got you got some people. I mean, we've played a game, uh, me and you, in like a Discord server, just talking, playing the games at some point. So it, it's very difficult to because you have to be like impartial, but you're also you're always gonna have somebody that's gonna come tell you, oh yeah, but he's friends with KFC. Or he's friend with him. Or he's friend he's friend with that moderator. Oh, if this moderator, oh, he's a colonial, so he has a bias. Or whatever. So it's it's a very complex issue, but it needs more transparency to alleviate all the problems. And th there is something that needs to be done because there, with the amount of the amount of stuff people are saying in the community, the amount of people that want, and I'm not agree, I'm not agreeing with this, that wants your head on a pike, and that wants you fire. That's not. It's not. Um constructive criticism and it's not how things work let, let me put a period on this uh by saying that even even if they do manage to open up and be more transparent about things i guarantee that that will not be enough for some people you know, oh, everyone, of course. everyone interprets transparency differently so it it, it that, you're right it is extremely complicated and that's just where we have. That's it. Ultimately, it's up to KFC and Mark and the dev team to just come with the decision. And I guess at some point, this is going to be a, I don't want to say a line in the sand, but maybe a choice is a choice. So I don't know. Well, uh, yeah, Lafar, if you didn't have anything else for us, thank you so much for calling in. I, I don't know if we, I don't know um, if we can even I be. I can just. Sure. Okay. Oh, 
Oh, go ahead. No, I was just saying, if, I don't know how much longer we can uh, hammer that point in. Extra, but yeah, yeah extrapolate different. on this. Um, the, the last thing I'm, I want to say is that a, a lot of the, a, a lot of the, the, the negative feedback you guys have, and at that point, it's not just for the moderation system, but even in the development, is you guys, I, I feel like you guys have a PR problem in a way that a lot of time you're going to put something out, and the way it's worded or the way it's, it's easily misinterpreted with some people. Uh, best example is the the dev blog you just said. It's like a lot that that you just released. A lot of the points like in that are misinterpreted by a portion of the community, and you have to come here and after that clarify that. But the problem is that you guys are so close to the community in a certain extent that when something is misinterpreted it turns very quickly into, I'm going to go talk to this guy, <laughs> and I'm going to go tell him to go kill himself. And <laughs> yeah. No, but, I mean, it's right. And that, c- come on, Kefsi, tell me, how much time do you have somebody that send you a message on Discord and tell you something like, you're a fucking asshole, and you should be, you should be fired? Tell me that does not happen to you. Yeah, I mean, definitely that does happen on occasion, and it's really unfortunate. But I think... What you said there is really important in that we're not we're not selling shoes here. We're not selling we're not selling jackets or some product. Um, we're selling people. This isn't this game isn't just a game. It's not just a twenty dollar commodity that you picked up off a shelf at a GameStop. This is this is your passion. This is your hobby. It's like yeah. when you when you change fundamental when you make make uh, poor decisions about somebody's hobby, somebody's passion. Of course, they're going to get very violent about it. And I think it's important that we remember that that even with these people that send you the the really hateful messages, is that they're doing it from a good place. I it, I try to keep that in mind when those messages come my way. And even if it's not a good place, it's still a passionate place. Because yeah. if we didn't care, we would like if we didn't care about Foxhole as not only a community but also also as a game itself, press score wouldn't exist. You know, I wouldn't have made radio plays. Jeffrey wouldn't have made the stuff he made. You know, Crazy wouldn't be a moderator. Like, we wouldn't care. I mean, we have basically the owner of the company right now talking to a bloke that is a player <laughs> and yeah. that he could just, like, he could just brush me off, tell me, like, yeah, you're a nobody, yeah. go fuck yourself. And, and, and that's another time thing. to come here and talk to me. So That's well, another thing that I want to highlight that, that that a lot of developers don't do, the transparency and the effortless and continuous communication that they have with us, the community. That's something that we have to remember. No other studio, like I, I dare you to find another studio that is as transparent and as communicative with its community other than, than Clapfoot. I'm sorry. Like this is not me sucking up to Markfoot. Like you cannot in good faith tell me that there's another studio that does it as well as Clapfoot because there is one. There, I, I, I don't want to start because there's other indie developers that are like a really great, uh, that very good interaction with their community to the level uh, they're doing it like right now, like just having a conversation, whatever. I don't think there's any other developers that are doing that and call me a set out or whatever. I don't care. But it, like I said, a, a lot of the problem comes from PR and real quick we have to we do have to close yes, on this but yeah yes, finish up your thought exactly yeah no no but that that's that's the only thing I have to say is just like a, a yeah, lot dude. of it comes from PR and by the way I'm available for hire if you need some like there is one thing that I do want to I do want to add to that last point I I do think it's a pro like one of the things that we've always tried to do is to just is to just is is to just like say things as they are, and that doesn't always work out that well because um, we don't have a we don't as you say we don't have a PR team that looks over everything and looks over each and every word and says you shouldn't do this word um, uh, because someone might take that and you know there might be like a misunderstanding. Often we just go out there and like say what's on our mind, and there's a pro and a con to that. The pro is that. Very often, um, there is the transparency, and you guys know exactly what we're thinking. But the con is that we're not perfect; we're just human beings, and we might say things that we don't mean sometimes, or we might say things that, you know, I don't know. Like when you're talking a lot, you sometimes just—it's hard. It's hard to be like perfect, and that's where the con is, and that's where sometimes you know you might say something, someone 
So I might go and I take that quote and completely misunderstand what you're trying to say. So it's no definitely a pro and a con. You to be perfect, Mark, Mark Fook. You can, you can rest easy on that. No, <laughs> well, that's good. no one's Mark asking you to be perfect. perfect. It's not. He's only saying that to hide the fact that he's a god. Yeah, well, <laughs> no, you, you, you know how it is. And it's weird because I have some students that play the game and they're probably going to see me talk to you guys and be like, wow, he's not like that when we talk to him in like a classroom or something. But like, he... so you're a god in a classroom. <laughs> I, I'm a god when it comes to robotics and project management, I guess. That's what I've been told. But this is not the point, and we're digressing now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, LaFarla, well, thank you so much for coming on. Hope to see you again in the future. That was a good, that was a good one. All right, coming up next, God Biscuit. God Biscuit, thank you so much for uh, calling in here to Zero Dark Press Corps. Have you called in before? I have not. This is the uh, first time. I don't think I've ever heard your voice before. <laughs> that's interesting. All right, well, this is uh, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be an interesting one we've got here. Uh, actually, yeah, why don't you why don't you go ahead and ask it? So my uh, question is around uh, moderator guidelines specifically. Um, so I posted something on Reddit that talks about in inconsistent uh, enforcement, uh, basically four people committed the same violation and received four different uh, punishments for it. So the specific question is, I think that's probably more to do with uh, different moderators reacting in different ways, but it looks like favoritism to the community. So the question that I specifically have is, uh, will guidelines be produced that uh, dictate at least a starting point for what violations should re result in different punishments? Um, will those be available to the community to read so we know what standards we're being held to and what to expect when we violate them. And I, I don't think that um, we're, we're ever going to arrive at a point where you can tell us exactly what punishment somebody received, but can we at least get something like a, an analytics screen that says, hey, this many people violated this rule and these are the average time that they were punished for, or something like that. If I'm being honest, um, the consistency of moderation has not been something that I really read. I, I read all the posts uh, about the, the moderator stuff from this dev blog, and I'm very, very aware of the people sending me messages, but the, uh, the consistency of moderation hasn't been a contentious issue for a long time unless i'm missing something or is there like a specific case that you're that you're referencing to where this was he, he details uh a few specific cases in the reddit post and i i realize you know this could turn into uh you know nitpicking a reddit post uh but yeah uh some, oh like, like, okay uh, all right yeah I, I got the reddit post here okay so you're you're primarily referring to like the the consistency of like reddit moderation well i'm, I'm talking about all moderation I, i'm talking about all moderation i think the the reddit moderation is a, a a specific example but i think moderation across reddit discord and the game should be consistently applied i see okay uh well like i said i i'm I don't think I, I, if I if I was to list the top five biggest problems with that were raised as like moderate, uh, I don't think that the consistency of the banning was really one of them. I think it's more. I it, correct me if I'm wrong, but it was more that like in that Reddit post or like in the in the dev blog post, I cited the case of somebody who's been a long time dedicated veteran, um, who we found like after having investigated him as a. A real person this person was just frustrated and we felt like he he wasn't going to do it again so we didn't we didn't come down on him too hard whereas the other case where somebody was very much um trying to to be a thorn in, in their team's side and and we believed that if the band came undue that he would definitely go back to it he got a longer time like definitely it's an inconsistency but i don't think that it was an unwarranted one um and i don't i don't think i've seen 
um, I've seen a lot of like, like, I think the bigger issue there that people were having was that it, it seemed like at first it seemed like we were, we were playing favorites, but I don't like that wasn't the intention. Well, and I, I do agree that that, that gray area needs to exist because, uh, I mean, every single incident is different. Every single individual is different, but I, I also think that the, the community deserves to, uh, have an expectation as to at least a, a guideline, a baseline of um, what those infractions are going to result in. Yeah, and I think you're right. I don't I don't know how much we're going to be able to say in the two weeks, but I'm going to try to say as much as I can and try to be as open with it as I can. And it's like you said, not everybody's ever going to be completely happy with it, uh, but we're going to try. All right, we'll we'll try our best and we'll see what we can what we can. Uh, let me try and punctuate this by saying uh, that even though a lot of the outcomes. And a lot of the punishments, uh, you know, applied may not be uh, consistent or fully transparent as to, you know, what, what kind of regulation are we going back to? What kind of rule are we going back to? I will say this about KFC, that how he treats every single case that comes across his desk is consistent in that he will hear people out, fully investigate something. And I know this because I've seen him do it uh, with various various people. That is consistent, and I don't think you can... At least I don't think that you can. Well, thank uh, you for that. <laughs> that you can uh, say that about him. I mean, he's still a piece of shit. But I mean, in terms of uh, <laughs> no, but in terms of uh, yeah, in terms of in terms of him trying I mean, to apply him. himself he, fairly. He's he one of us. Yeah. He's still a good guy. Yeah, but I think him yeah, trying to apply himself fairly. At least, yeah, obviously, this is just me talking. But I obviously this is just me talking. But I think him trying to apply himself fairly to each one. That's the consistency that I see. Um, now, whether we should you should be happy about how he handled that one particular griefer, that's that's something different. But yeah, uh, biscuit, did you have anything else for us, or wanted to finish off with something? Yeah, just uh, the the other question of um, mm -hmm. so. Uh, Sunlight is the best sanitizer, and uh, I, I do see the point that we don't want uh, retribution against people that have already been punished by the moderators. So we can't post their names, but uh, something as far as like an analytics thing that uh, shows that, hey, these are the crimes that people committed. This is the uh, average sentence that they got, and this is how many happened in the last three months. Yeah, statistics would help a lot. And I think what we're going to, one of the ideas that we had for trying to express the, the policy changes is rather than going through the policies specifically, we might we might have to with some of them, we, we probably won't be able to, but some of the ways we might be able to is to actually pull real life cases from months ago, ones that are not relevant, redact all the names so that nobody's being harmed, uh, and then just show like the action that was taken six months ago, and then Dude, show that's an what, amazing what, idea. What action would happen now under the new policies okay. something thank you like for your that. time yeah anything yeah no biscuit, thank you so much for coming in here i know that wasn't an easy one at all yeah all right appreciate it uh i think we'll want to on your subways on in here um i think toronto answered and i think rufus will get here in a little bit i you know i will say i'll, I'll keep searching through the list but i will say this i, I do wonder would that even be satisfying? Like, what the, what is that, I'll be contrarian, what is the, what is the purpose does it serve to say that, yeah, here's a case log from six months ago, and, um, you know, here's how, how we handle that, and here's how it, how it happened, and here's how you can get into the specifics of how, you know, why you came to that decision. I guess to honestly, illuminate honestly, how, I'm answering my question, go ahead, Rod, go ahead. Honestly, it, it be, Okay, look, people are, people want accountability. That's that's the first thing that we can gather from the reports that we're getting. People want accountability. Second thing, they want transparency. There's only so much transparency you can give before it devolves into like, oh, I disagree with your judgment of this. You know, like there's only so much transparency right. you can give. But at the same time, giving people an understanding of how cases are going to be treated and how you can expect certain cases to be looked at and then solved, it makes it easier for people to understand like, oh, this is what I can expect. This is how I should frame something. Look, if, if, if this is how I have to explain my problem and it would make the, it would make the mods jobs way easier. And if the mods jobs are easy, then the game just flows way better. I just simply think that. This is this is another this is a whole different life for me. But um, 
This is, this is like getting towards... No, this is honestly like pointing towards... Creeping towards like judicial review and like the Supreme <laughs> Court. My God, that part of my life. But anyway, um, uh, yeah, I, I, we'll move on. I don't, I don't think Rufus is here. Uh, we'll get to Mark... Oh my goodness, what is it? Not Mark. Marcus. Is he here? Oh, people, you got to get into the lounge chat. Let's see. Oh, and finally, just the idea of like giving people realistic expectations of like, oh, can I expect this guy to keep doing this over and over again? Or is this going to be solved in a way that's satisfactory? All right, coming up next, Joxa. Joxa, welcome to the stream. Welcome to Zero Dark Prescott here, live broadcast where anyone can call in. You can join in through the Discord link below, but just so you know, uh, we've been going on for two and a half hours, and I want to personally thank uh, Rod, Chicken, and Mark for uh, staying with me so long, and of course all the callers uh, who have been waiting patiently while I kind of screwed up the order, but that's okay. Jo- Joxa, uh, welcome to Zero Dark Press Corps. What did you have for us? Thanks, thanks. I am here to advocate for my main man, Pi, Pi Squared. Uh, many of you know him as a good shit poster, a good friend to many of us, and he's unjustly been banned from FOD. Well, not banned, but uh, he cannot participate in discussions and cannot share his beautiful memes to us. Um, and free pie. <laughs> also, should we, should this... memes. This is a real, real topic. Passionate about it. Memes are a beautiful art form. It makes the community better. Everyone's happy when they're made. But we can't have them in FOD, apparently. Like, people get muted left and right for that. What's the deal with that? I love pie. He's a good guy. He's a, he's a really, really good guy, actually. Like, I love him as a person, and, and, like, he's extremely beneficial to the community as a whole. He misstepped. Um, he misstepped after being warned, and the it, like you said, he is a bit of a shit poster. There's no excuses being made there. Uh, and at this time, the moderator team is not reviewing that application, in, in no small part, because it's not... This is not something that we want in the public space. This is something that isn't that shouldn't be advocated by people who are friends of Pi. This should be advocated by Pi himself talking to the moderators. Mm, Pi's tried to contact the moderators as far as I know, but there's not been any response really. Yeah, there there has, but I, I mean, we haven't changed the policies yet, so I'm gonna I'm gonna cite the old policy that we really should only be talking to Pi about it. Uh, so I I can't say anything. All right, but I'm also here to advocate for meme freedom in FOD. (laughs) That's all I'm here for. I mean, that's something we absolutely should talk about as a community. Uh, In fact, you know, I forget the Cronus Winner um, roundtable. We need a we need a roundtable with uh, some of the best shit shit posters. uh, (laughs) That would be hilarious. That would be great. Um, Joxa, thank you so much for calling in. Thank you for letting me in. No problem. Uh, just to reiterate what KFC said, uh, if you, uh, I know I leave the door way open for pretty much whatever questions whatsoever. And the second one about uh, memes on the FOD, that was, I think that was valid. But in terms of specific cases, um, uh, just know that those will just kind of be turned away and be like, hey, just DM KFC in particular if you think you don't deserve to be banned or something's been wrong. So uh, we don't want to litigate um, your case specifically here on the air, but that's okay, Jock. So you didn't, you, know, you didn't. That wasn't clear before. You didn't know about that. You're cool. All right, coming up next is Stranger Days. I think no, it's punished. No, I, I screwed it up. All right, hey, Stranger Days, welcome to welcome to Zero Dark Press Core. How are you here? Oh, hey, this feels familiar and different at the same time. <laughs> Hi, KFC. I'm here to complain at you for today, but not really. Ah, uh, Stranger Days. You want to be a moderator again? I hear it's all the rage. Sure, I can't get any more hated in the community, hey. <laughs> um, But seriously though, I, I do have a question. So, obviously you guys have now considered changing moderation policy, well, question slash suggestion. But have you ever thought about how to do it? Right now, moderation team, I'm gonna be honest, Griefing happens fast. Griefing happens stupidly fast. A lot of things in Fox will happen fast, except for Lottie. But um, when somebody decides to dump supplies, that has a very, very, very narrow window of response time. 
And even then, I know in one particular case, we found the guy who dumped supplies. We saw that he dumped supplies. We had evidence that he dumped supplies. We had the entire list of items that he dumped. And you said, yeah, but he could have just brought those to a different place. That's a, that's a specific case. And my issue here is just that there are a lot of things in Foxhole that need retroactive action because actually getting people there on time to solve the issues we don't have the people for it. we don't have the numbers or the time we don't have paid moderators and even if we had paid moderators i think you guys would either be hiring like an entire call center of underage chinese people or like maybe a handful of people who are really good at their jobs and either way i don't think that they're going to be able to manage our entire community Oh, I'm sorry, so, was there a specific question along with that? Uh, have, you hear you. Thought, have you put thought into retroactive moderation and how to go about that? Doing things about stuff that have already happened and perhaps having better information about that? Alright, well... Um, okay, I, I, basically, nothing's off the table at this point. Um, there's tools that we can implement. For example, what if, like, you're right, retro, retroactively could be one of them. I mean, up until this point, we have been very, very discreet and very quiet about replacing items lost. Um, I won't get into the reasons for that, but I think that, that but that has been the policy that we don't, we don't really want to upset the balance of things. So we, we, when we did replace things, we didn't really tell anybody about it. We just did it. Um, but maybe that needs to change, right? Maybe people just need to hear about when items are spawned back in, uh, that the griefers, maybe the griefer needs to hear it more than anyone, that they got banned and that all of their efforts were ultimately undone. I'm going to counterpoint but, that, uh, and maybe you were going to lead into this, but then could that lead into the situation where people go, well, hold on, uh, how come they got their stuff refunded? What about me? And you said that this wasn't worth refunding. And then other people will come up and be, uh, you know, you know, it's tough because when you start doing it for one person, you have to do it for everyone, right? It, for, to get that sense of fairness. Absolutely, absolutely. And this, the existing mod policies, again, there would be guidelines to specify how that would work. Like, you, you, even though, yes, if you do it for one person, you got to do it for everyone. That meets a specific criteria, and finding that criteria is not going to be that difficult. Yeah, I think that's a really good, really good point. I think that's really what players want to see is that they want to know when these things can be replaced and when they can't. I will and say it needs a, to be a clear line. A lot of the times, people give our moderation team shit, and sometimes, very, very large asterisk there, it is not wrong that they're giving them shit. Other times, it is entirely wrong, and the moderators actually are surprisingly hardworking for having zero pay, no dedicated hours, very few benefits, completely volunteer position, alienating themselves from the community, so on and so forth. Even so, they do a lot of good work when they're available to, and I think that if a moderation system was in place where it could be like, oh, well, I have time, let me just log in and replace these items that were dumped on the ground that despawned, that were clearly nowhere near the front line, and weren't dumped out just to prevent the enemy from getting them. And I, I think I think part of the solution to that is designing the game. And you, KFC, you explicitly mentioned this in the dev blog, the original dev blog, but I think part of that also comes into um, designing the game in such a way where... Uh, you close those holes, you close those flaws that allow people to grief in the first place or allow um, allow you know arguments to arise in the first place. Uh, like KFC, you mentioned, I think, I think we already did talk about this, so I think we've come full circle, yeah. but yeah, like how, like the, how you gave uh, trucks the ability to lock. Originally, lock, trucks couldn't lock at all. People could just steal trucks left and right. Um, but then... You close that hole, and now you don't even need to moderate those things anymore. The, that whole, you know, era of truck moderation is now, well, mostly, uh, solved, right? And so, is that, isn't that the whole idea that you had with the, with the whole self-regulation thing? Like, if you create game mechanics that prevent that, 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 that griefing issue from even being an issue, you don't even have to moderate that. 
Yeah, and then it takes part of that sandbox element away, which is the the, the downside element of it. But I mean, that's that's beside. The, I think really tangential to that, which is a really this is a really cool video. I'm actually going to link in the chat because I love it. I go for it. There's a video about um, somebody who documented his. Uh, the language of video game, uh, that somebody who grew up with video games, playing video games, uh, and then he married a woman who didn't play any, never played a single one. And she had the, and, and he documented this video of her playing some of the most simplest games like Mario and how she picks it up and the, the sort of mistakes she makes. And it's really interesting that what he talks about is like, we as gamers grew up, um, with certain rules in place, certain understandings. We understand that the game is, like, for example, that in Mario, that if I fall, I die. And you you take that from that game to the next game, you, like Legend of Zelda, and you you know if you fall down that hole, you die. And And we've slowly evolved over time to get to this point where we're playing really complex games like Foxhole. And these rules, a lot of the rules that you grew up with may not necessarily apply here and that's really really hard to train some people and that's that's honestly one of the core problem fundamental problems with a lot of uh, moderation uh the moderation uh, complaints we get is that people simply don't understand that just because you can do something doesn't mean it's okay just to clarify the video is what games are like for someone who doesn't play games by rasputin it's got 4.6 million views, I think. I know I saw this before as well, and it's it's really yeah. fascinating to get that perspective. I watched it because I was introducing my girlfriend to video games, and I was like, I need to understand how she sees this. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure that if you're taking supplies out of a warehouse and dumping them on the ground, and you don't know why that's wrong, you have a lot more problems than just not understanding video game rules. Yeah. No doubt. I'm not. I'm not making a case to defend those people. I'm just suggesting that we have to look at this from our perspective as well. And the original dev blog sort of out, outlined this: is that even somebody acting out of pure, somebody who comes into the game and was like, "Ha, I'm bored. I'm going to kill a bunch of friendlies." Even these people may not necessarily be entirely at fault. It's kind of our fault for leaving friendly fire on, right? I mean, what other MMO do you know you can kill friendlies? I mean, not if friendly many. fire wasn't on, then I'd totally gasp the entire front line, because, I mean, my own troops, they don't die to green <laughs> exactly. exactly, and that's why we want to leave it on. And and with with that comes some really unusual rules that people are not going to be used to. And when they, when they kill people, obviously they should know that that's wrong, but if we have a moderator come in and permanently ban them for it, that's a little bit I don't know. To, in my mind, that in the past, anyway, before we get into the to the rehashing of these policies, that was that seems a little extreme for for something that that could have been that that is at least five percent our fault. No, I've seen I've seen that happen before. I can attest to that as well. I'm sorry, Mark. I'll, I'll get to you in a bit. It's just where, like, at the end of every Counter Strike round, personally, when I see that happen, people just kill each other, right? Because it's casual and no one cares about the weapons. And that's just that's just like a reflex for some people. And then you try and do that in Foxhole. Yeah, someone will come in and ban you if you try and do that. But if if they didn't try and hear those things out, well then I don't know. It it'll it'll I think it'll get messy there too. Uh, I'm sorry, Mark. You had something to say? No, I was just gonna say that there's a reason why nobody wants to make this kind of game because it's a lot of pain and <laughs> it's a lot of challenges, and you're trying to make this thing that um, has has these conflicting uh, conflicting elements. Like, how do you have a, a game with that's supposed to be a sandbox where players are supposed to try to work together? And, you know, but here we are. It's what we're trying to make, right? It's a blessing and a curse. And nobody so, understands that better than Stranger. Stranger is one of the ex-moderators. I think he, he got really stressed out being a moderator, and I, I don't think anybody understands the problems that we face better than him. I looked at myself and I said, you know, tomorrow I'm probably going to just kick this guy from the Discord or ban this guy from the Discord if uh, if I still have powers tomorrow. Maybe it's time to take a break. And so I did, before I did something that I couldn't undo. Well, Stranger Days, did you have anything else for us here? Oh, uh, I up. would actually like to talk a little bit more about the idea of retroactive moderation you said that nothing is really off the table at this point. What sort of 
I mean, uh, what is it, 1.0? You, Mark Foot, you said you wanted to get to 1.0 by the end of the year, right? You, what sort of moderation tools would be feasible in that time frame? Like, what could this we year ask next for that year? we could get? 2020, right? Yeah, well, I mean, if it's going to be anything, it's going to be 2020. There's no way we're going to go 1.0 this year. <laughs> um, but I think that something that um, is part of the part of the review process um, is that I think that we need to, there's always so much work for us to do in so many different parts of the game. There's so many voices um, telling us to do so many different things. It's um, that, but uh, I think that something that is clear um, that we talked about today is that the actual moderate moderation tools themselves need um, a, a lot more time and effort uh, need to be like put into it because we're in this we're in this for the long run and and if we're going to survive this in the long run um this is just such an important part of the game um that that we need to i think we need to put in like three times more effort into our tools if i have to be honest i mean we have put in a lot of effort in the past and and you know it, it's a far cry from what it was like a year or like two ago but i think we i think we just need to do so much more in that regard Right. And I think the key thing is that we have to take more of like a proactive approach um, for these tools and, and not sort of wait for uh, there to be more problems in the future before and then say, OK, we got to just fix this one thing. Rather, we should just, you know, take a look at it in general. But OK, how do we how do we try to prevent more of these things in happening in the future? So on that subject, I don't know if I've ever actually gotten a chance to ramble at you about uh, well, I mean, we already had Lech ramble earlier, but I, I, I'll at least try to ramble a short amount of time. Ramble about my idea for retroactive moderation. I believe that Foxhole needs a sort of heat map. Something that records every 5, 10, I don't know, maybe even 15 or 30 seconds what a player is doing, their rough position on the map. Their, or not really what they're doing. Their rough position on the map, their inventory, if they're driving a vehicle, what vehicle they're driving, and then the inventory of said vehicle. Those are, I think, very good indicators of what a person is doing, where they are, and what they're trying to do. And I believe that it would vastly assist moderators in moderation. I mean, if you see a dude who's a colonial, and he has a truck full of high explosive materials, and he drives into Warden Lines, when there's, like, you know, probably a very well-established front line right next to him, it looks like it's pretty clear what he's trying to do. He's trying to give supplies to the enemy. Or if you see somebody in a jeep manage to drive said supplies all the way back to a Laji hub, once again, pretty clear cut what he's trying to do. If you see somebody hop into a tank and drive into the ocean and then repeat said action five more times, it looks like it's pretty clear he's trying to grief. And such information would be available relatively often to the moderators, if not constantly, with a rough approximation of what's going on. I think that even if we you were to go as far as every 30 seconds, every half minute, you don't get too far away in Fox unless you're, like, driving full speed on a motorcycle. Yeah, so we can't, like, unfortunately, it's, at least under the current, like, policies, it's not a great idea to talk about what, um, what current tools moderators have access to and what they don't because players are going to try to skirt skirt those tools um but i think generally if you're suggesting that we have more information um i couldn't agree more right i, I think as much information available on each player um, as possible is definitely definitely the way to go i want to know the color of their underwear 